This is the video for the higher level portion of D4.3 on climate change. One of the things that we'll look into to actually measure the extent of climate change is called phenology. Phenology is the study of seasonal timing of events in both plants and animals. So if I'm looking at things like blooming, okay, those changes in timing can often indicate a climate change. Now, things that have seasonal timings will have two major factors that play into when those events occur, temperature and photo period. Photo period is the number of daylight hours per day, which varies seasonally. So some examples of things that are affected by temperature is like bud burst, so having like new uh, leaves on a plant. Some uh, things that are affected by photoperiodism, so it could be bud set, so that's growth stoppage of a plant. Um, it could be the flowering of a plant, um, things like bird migration, those are all impacted by photoperiodism. Synchronization of biological events is really important. For example, migration needs to be timed with food availability. Now, what's really interesting about these biologically timed events is that they are impacted by two things, photoperiodism and temperature. Photoperiods do not change. Those are just due to the tilt and rotation of the earth. That doesn't change. Temperatures, however, are changing. They're changing as a result of global climate change, those anthropogenic causes that are um, causing higher levels of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. So if especially if two different species, two interacting species need to synchronize their timings, this is going to be a little bit difficult. One species might be cued by photo periods, so for example, a bird migration, and the other might be cued by temperature, so for example, bud burst. However, a disruption in temperature might throw off the timing, and then you have bud burst happening on a different timeline, but migration is still happening on the other timeline because it's due to photo periods, and now they're no longer synchronized. This is going to cause a major disruption in your ecosystem. So for an example, uh, this is the caribou, and the caribou's migration is set off by photoperiodism, so by daylight hours uh, in a single day. Now that is usually synchronized to match the timing with this plant that they eat. This is called the Arctic mouse ear, and so their movement is going to match um, the blooming or the bud burst of this plant. If there is a mismatch in the timing of the migration and the bud burst, okay, then those events are no longer synchronized and then this caribou will not have enough food supply. Another example can be seen with this bird called the great tit and it eats caterpillars as you can see here. Now, it really needs to increase its food intake during breeding season, and that breeding season is controlled by daylight hours in a single day, so that season has stayed the same. But caterpillar populations are based on temperature, so those populations have started to peak earlier in the year. So when this bird is ready for breeding season, the caterpillar population has already peaked and has started to decline, and so there isn't enough food to sustain all the chicks, and you get fewer surviving chicks. But not all populations are negatively impacted by climate change. Things like pests actually see an increase in these warmer temperatures. So for example, the spruce bark beetle, this is a beetle that develops in trees that are, are weakened. Now normally healthy trees can limit this beetle population. There's only a few weak trees where this beetle can grow. However, the warmer temperatures and the drought have increased the stress on all of the trees, making a, a lot more trees available for this spruce bark beetle to inhabit, and so I'm having more spruce bark beetles. 
In fact, their climate has been so much more amenable, so much more comfortable for them that instead of having a two year generation time, that is now down to one year. And so because those trees are more susceptible, there are more beetles. And this is a huge pest problem that is decimating um, some of these tree forests like what we see here. For the populations that are able to survive climate change, it's really causing them to evolve. So remember, evolution is a change in heritable characteristics in a population. Evolution by natural selection requires there to be an overpopulation that sets up competition. It requires that there is variation and it requires survival of the fittest. So remember fitness being the degree to which your heritable characteristics give you an advantage in survival or reproduction. And because of that, those individuals that have that advantage are going to survive, reproduce, and pass along their genes more frequently. So we'll see an increase in that trait frequency. We'll look at the example of the tawny owl. So the tawny owl is definitely one of those organisms being impacted by climate change. Now, overpopulation and competition is always a factor, whether we're talking about climate change or not. So there's a finite amount of food available for these owls. There's also a natural variation here. Again, the variation was not caused by climate change that existed before. So we can see that there are two different feather colors, gray versus brown. However, with the introduction of climate change and warmer temperatures, what it means to be fit in that environment has changed. So less snow cover changes the ability to blend in for that gray owl. So it's no longer advantageous to be a gray owl if there is no snow to blend in with. So because of that, the brown owl will um, survive, reproduce, and pass along its genes more often. And so we will see an increase in that brown color. So again, theme Z, all about continuity and change. What drives natural selection and evolution remains the same. Okay, however, when we change the climate, okay, we're going to see a change um, in the evolutionary patterns of these populations.